In your adult patients who would like to proceed with eustachian tube dilation, does the fact that they have have occasional episodes of patchless-type symptoms, is that a contraindication to them getting a dilation? Or would you just say, maybe we need to shorten it to one minute? Okay. If they've had patchless symptoms, <laughs> red alert. Uh, you don't want to convert them to permanently patchless. So that patient is almost automatically going to, well, it depends on how, how often it's happened, how recent was it, does it happen every time they're exercising, et cetera. If they've had significant episodes of patchless, I'll do everything I can to avoid doing a balloon dilation at all. Now, if they uh, really, if it's really indicated, I will turn down the uh, dilation time. Yes, minute and a half, minute. You don't want to overdo it because patients hate being patchless. Yeah, kind of create another another problem. If you dilate a patient for one minute and they don't have as much success as as you were hoping, do you ever consider you know, doing a repeat and doing it a little bit longer the next time? So uh, we have to decide, uh, do we think it was a problem that it was an insufficient amount of time or does this patient have a problem higher up in the lumen, perhaps in the bony eustachian tube that a repeat dilation isn't going to help? So we have to sort that out. I would probably do exactly what we said earlier, make sure, you know, get a CT, in that patient, make sure they don't have an obstruction in the bony eustachian tube. But if everything looks like, yeah, the patient was better temporarily, but then the symptoms came right back, then I know the balloon did something, and yeah, I could take them back and have to do it for longer. That's actually very unusual. I, I've probably done that a handful of times, if that. So uh, balloon's pretty effective, even at one minute. A more common scenario with a, with a one-minute balloon would be that the uh, they had a benefit for weeks or months, and then it slowly started to slip back or they didn't keep their allergies under control or something. That's the more common scenario where I would consider, okay, let's get your medical condition back under control, and we can do this again, and maybe I will do it for a longer time. And do you find that patients are wanting to kind of abandon all medical therapy after they do a dilation in hopes that they are cured? And do they need to continue their medical therapies? Yeah, oh, they absolutely would love to just discontinue it. And we really have to emphasize very strongly that this is a medical condition. You've got to keep that under control. Uh, we're, we're all familiar with adenoid tissue growing back if your allergies are not adequately controlled, if they're smoking. This is adenoid-like tissue we're treating inside the lumen of the eustachian tube. It behaves the same way. If you don't keep the underlying problem under control, you could ultimately fail. But if you have a patient with what you think is irreversible disease, the balloon will get you over that hump, but they've got to do the medical control to keep it uh, under control. 